peace is mine. Mine when I'm weary. Mine when I'm cheery. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, Jesus is mine. Mine all the time. He is mine. Oh, mine, mine, mine. Jesus is mine. He's mine when I'm weary. He's mine when I'm cheery. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine all the time. He's mine, mine, mine. Oh, Jesus is mine. He's mine when I'm weary. He's mine when I'm cheery. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine all the time. Let's sing this morning. He's mine, mine, mine. Oh, Jesus is mine. He's mine when I'm weary. Mine when I'm cheery. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine all the time. Let's offer up some praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy this morning. We bless your name, Jesus. Lord, we've come to lift you up and magnify you this morning. Thank you for your goodness today. Thank you for your mercies in my life today, Jesus. Lord, we've come to magnify you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You said you'd go with us every step of the way today. You'd never leave us or forsake us. Lord, you're going to be with us always, even unto the end of the world. Thank you for the promises in your book today. Thank you for the Bible today. Thank you for the map, the Word of God this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless you today. We bless you today. Lord, we've come to lift you up and magnify your precious holy name. We need you in this place today. We desire a move of the Holy Ghost this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mine, 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 oh Jesus is mine. Mine when I'm weary. He's mine when I'm cheery. Mine, 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 oh Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine all the time. Mine, 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 oh Jesus is mine. He's mine when I'm weary and mine when I'm cheery. Mine, 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 oh Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine all the time. One more time. Mine, 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 oh Jesus is mine. Mine when I'm weary, he's mine when I'm cheery. Mine, 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 oh Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine all the time. Let's thank him this morning. He's so good to me today. How about you? Thank you, Jesus. We love you today, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come and worship the Lord together. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise and honor today. Blessed be the name. We're serving a great God, church, and he's worthy of our great praise today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. For the angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. You believe it this morning, we serve a great God. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God that we serve. For the angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God that we serve. 
Oh, what a mighty God we serve. For the angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God that we serve. Well, what a mighty God we serve for. Angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we sing it again. That we, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. All the angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God that we serve. Now the angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God that we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God that I serve. For the angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. Aren't you glad you know who Jesus is? Aren't you glad you know who he is? Aren't you glad you know who the God is that you serve? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is He. The Everlasting Father, the King eternally. The Wonderful in Wisdom, by whom all things were made. The fullness of the Godhead in Jesus is displayed. Well, it's all in Him. It's all in Him. The Godhead, it's all in Him. Yes, it's all in Him. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Emmanuel, God with us, Jehovah, Lord of hosts, the omnipresent Spirit who fills the universe, the advocate, the high priest, the lamb for sinners slain. He's the author of redemption. Oh, glory to his name. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. Yes, it's all in him. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus and it's all in him. I know it's all in him. It's all the fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. It's all in him. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus and it's all in him. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the living word incarnate, the helpless sinner's friend, our wisdom and perfection, our righteousness and power. Yea, all we need is Jesus. We find this very hour and it's all. Well, it's all in Him, the fullness of the Godhead. It's all in Him. Well, it's all in Him. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. And our God for whom we've waited, 
will be the glad refrain of Israel recreated when Jesus comes again. Lo, he will come and save us, our King and Priest to be. For in him dwells our fullness, and Lord of all is he. Will it? Hallelujah. We worship you today. Well, the fullness of the Godhead, it's all in Him, it's all in Him, it's all in Him, the mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him, well, it's all in Him, it's all in Him, the fullness of the Godhead, it's all in Him, it's all in Him. In Him, it's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Emmanuel, God with us, Jehovah, Lord of hosts, the omnipresent Spirit who fills the universe. He's the advocate, the high priest, the lamb for sinners slain. He's the author of redemption. Oh, glory to his name. Well, it's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead, it's all in him. It's all in him. It's all in in him where the mighty God is Jesus sing it again well it is all in him yes it's all in him the fullness of the Godhead it's all in him I know it's all in him it's all in him the mighty God is Jesus and it's all in him hallelujah aren't you glad hallelujah he's the author of our salvation it is by his precious blood that we have been sanctified it is by the shed blood of Jesus Christ we have redemption through his blood Oh, can somebody worship the Lord this morning? Can somebody thank Him for your salvation today? Can somebody worship Him for redemption, for sanctification? Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship it. We worship it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship it. We worship you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. No, I cannot tell it all. Well, I cannot tell it all. He has done so much that I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. Well, he done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. No, I cannot. No, I cannot tell it all. Well, he's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. One more time that he has done so much for me that I cannot tell no, I cannot tell it all. Well, I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. Has it been good to you, church? Has it been good to you? Can we love him together? We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship all the presence of the Holy Ghost is in the house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in the place. We, can we worship Him today? Can we give Him praise? We give you glory and honor today, Jesus. For you alone are worthy of our praise and worship. Oh, I cannot tell it all. Well, He's done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. And what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve for Thee. 
angels bow before him and heaven and earth adore him what a mighty god we serve well what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve for angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty god we serve hallelujah hallelujah oh give thanks to the lord for he is good his mercy is everlasting it lasts forever and ever and ever and when you get to forever it lasts another day can we lord worship the lord for he is great and greatly to be praised
的一阵。So keep your lamps all trimmed and burning, ready or not. He's coming again one more time, ready or not. The Lord is coming, ready or not. He's coming again. So keep your lamps all trimmed and burning. Ready or not, he's coming again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation. If you're not ready, you can be ready before you leave this place today. Hallelujah. Remember the old uh, game we played, hide and seek, ready or not, here I come. Hallelujah. He's coming back in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We got to be ready. Praise God. I don't want to hide from him when he comes. I want to be ready. Praise the Lord. Pastor's coming this morning. Hallelujah. Good to be in the house of God this evening, or this morning. Hallelujah. I'm getting ahead of myself. Isn't God good? Yes. Amen. It is so good to have Autumn here with us this morning. And this fine-looking young man. Terrence, thank you. I was thinking Stetson. Hallelujah. We're not even close. It's good, so good to have them here this morning with us. And uh, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to call him that. <laughs> Amen. But God is certainly good, and we're so thankful to be in the presence of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. I feel the Lord here in a special way. <clears throat> I believe that God wants to meet your need. Hallelujah. I still believe He's a miracle worker. Don't you? I still believe that he can still heal. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He is able to deliver you from any kind of disease, any kind of sickness, any kind of addiction, any kind of problems. Hey, man, we're still serving a deliverer or the, the deliverer. He is the only one. Hey, man, I was listening to a lady that, uh, that my wife was sharing a podcast, and, and uh, she was from another religion that served uh, how many gods did they say they served? 3.3 3. 3 million gods that they serve. Hallelujah. You're talking about problems. Hallelujah. Amen. I am so thankful I know who Jesus is. Amen. I know who the God is that I serve, and his name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm so thankful he is the only one that died for man's sin. And he's the only one that rose for, again from the dead. The rest of the gods that they serve out there is still dead. Hallelujah. But our God is alive forevermore. Good to be in the house of God. If you would stand with me, we'll get into the word. Just an update from what we mentioned last Sunday on the Christmas for Christ offering. There has been another offering that was brought in. Uh, and uh, it brings it to a total of $3,445. Hallelujah. So God has certainly blessed this church, and we are certainly thank you, thankful for your spirit of sacrifice. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 is where I want to draw your attention to this morning. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. I'm going to read verses 25 through 31, and then I'm going to read it from a different translation. So I want you to just stay with me this morning until we get through the text. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse number 25, the Bible says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 
And base things of the world and the things which are despised hath he chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord. Now before I read it from another translation, let me just say what the Apostle Paul was simply saying. If, it, if it's right or if it's what's done in the world, God does the opposite. I guess we always say that what God does, that the devil always has a substitute or a, uh, a substitute for, and he does the opposite of God. But God, uh, in his wisdom, has chosen things that uh, this world has decided not to choose. He has chosen the weak over the strong. He has chosen uh, the, the, the foolish over the wise and, and so forth. Let me read from a different translation. The Bible says God's nonsense is wiser than human wisdom. Hallelujah. In other words, uh, if I can just be plain and I don't want to be uh, out of line, but, but when God is just goofing off, his goofing off is smarter than the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. His nonsense is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, consider that... That when you were called, God called you to be Christians. Not many of you were wise from a human point of view. You were not powerful in position or in upper social classes. But God chose what the world considers nonsense to put wise men or wise people to shame. God chose what the world considers weak to put what is strong to shame. God chose what the world considers ordinary. Everybody say ordinary. And what is despised, and what it despises, what it considers to be nothing, in order to destroy what it considers to be something. As a result, no one can brag in God's presence. You are partners with Christ Jesus because of God. Jesus has become our wisdom sent from God, our righteousness, our holiness, and our ransom from sin. As scriptures say, whosoever or whoever brags must brag about what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. I want you to understand in me there is nothing good. The Bible says, Paul speaking, uh, when you look at me, you see a man, and, and man uh, that does not have the ability to be what God can be. Hallelujah. And, I, and when I glory, I can only glory in Christ Jesus. I want to preach to you this morning on a, on a simple thought, and I believe there's a spirit that has infiltrated the church today. Uh, that we need to guard against, we need to cast out, and I'm going to call it the devil named normal. Hallelujah. The devil named normal. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and worship the Lord? We love you, Jesus. We're so thankful today for your precious word. Thank you, Lord, that is a light unto our feet. God, it is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. God, we're so thankful for the faithfulness of the saints of God today. So thankful, Lord, for the worship that they have worshipped with today. I know it's been pleasing to you because it's come from the heart. God, we ask the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be upon the remainder of the service today. God, reach over the Internet to those that are following on Facebook. Let the presence of the Holy Ghost fill their room where they're sitting today. God, fill this room again this morning, Lord, that the presence of the Holy Ghost be felt. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, you are worthy of our praise and our worship. God, we're so thankful today, so thankful today of your love and mercy. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that's within me. I bless your holy name this morning. We love and appreciate you, God. You are great and greatly to be praised. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Verse 28 of this new, uh, this other translation simply says, God chose what the world considers ordinary and what it despises, what it considers to be nothing in order to destroy what, is, what it considers to be something. We've been taught, and I'm sure all of us have taught our children to act a certain way. You're not supposed to act that way. How many, you don't raise your hands, but how many told your children, you know you're not supposed to act like that. 
Hallelujah. You, you teach your children how to act a certain way and how to walk a certain way and, and how to talk a certain way and, and even tie their shoes a certain way. There's different ways of tying uh, tie up shoes. But, but I've noticed children that have been taught uh, uh, differently how to do it doesn't mean one way is right, one way is wrong. It's just that we have chosen to teach our children certain things. We've taught them that, uh, that they need to be uh, act like other kids, just be normal and just, just go along with the flow. Uh, uh, we teach them not really to stand out in the crowd because sometimes, and, and let me just throw this in for good measure, sometimes it embarrasses us as parents when our children are abnormal or not like other children and doesn't act like other children. Now, I, want, I don't know about you, but there's kids that I'm glad my kids didn't act like. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but, but we even go as far at times to tell them when our children have deviated or grandchildren have deviated from what we consider or what we deem normal, we, we sometimes say to them, why can't you be like your brother or your sister or why can't you be like other kids in the neighborhood or why can't you be like other grandkids that these other grandparents have? We force them into a place of being normal or we, 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 we the, the, the term is cookie cutter generation where we want them all to act the same and act alike and when you look at the backgrounds of the disciples that Jesus called when he called the 12 apostles Amen. They were all from different backgrounds. None of them acted the same. None of them, none of them walked the same. None, none of them thought the same thoughts and, and had the same actions. They had different personalities. They had different temperaments. They had different occupations. Amen. God designed his disciples and when he called them, he called them to be different. He called them to change the world. And I'm here to tell you today, saints of God, if we want to change our community, if we want to change our world, we've got to fight against the spirit of normal and, and say, God, I want to go beyond being normal and I want to be what you want me to be. The disciples of Jesus Christ were supposed to be deviations from the norm. They were not supposed to act like the Pharisees and they weren't supposed to think like the Sadducees thought. They were supposed to be different. God chose them because they were different. And I want to tell everybody here today, you're sitting in the house of God under the presence of the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost because God chose you because you were different than anybody else. Hallelujah. Of all the people in this room today, none of us are the same. Matter of fact, we're all somehow completely the opposite. They say opposites attract. Hallelujah. My wife and I are completely the opposite. Not, not get into the areas and where we're opposite, but we are opposite. You and your wife or your husband is different. God has designed that uni, unity of marriage to bring two people together that think differently, that walk differently, that talk differently, that are different so that they can have and come together in holy matrimony and, and live a lifetime together in wedded bliss. Aren't you thankful today that we can get along with our spouse even though we're different? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've spent years trying to be like mainstream religion. Hallelujah. Many people by doing this have lost their identity. Man, I, I don't say this with any kind of uh, gladness of heart, but there are so many churches that used to preach truth and still believe they preach in truth, but they have lost their identity that God had chose for them when he called them out of darkness into this marvelous light. I'm so thankful today that I'm not the normal man that I once was. Uh, amen. The day, when the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, amen, the church that was birthed 
in the upper room was much different than what the Pharisees were used to. Amen. Their actions in the way they ministered and the way they conducted themselves were not like the Sadducees conducted themselves. and They weren't accustomed to that. And, and because of the, the abnormality of the upper room experience, they began to suffer persecution and suffer uh, ridicule from the from religious leaders of that day from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Matter of fact, it was so abnormal that it drew a curious crowd of over 3,000 people outside the upper room because it was not normal. It was a sound that they were not used to. It was a noise that was noised abroad that they weren't accustomed to listening to coming out of a church setting. And because it was different, friend, there was 3,000 people added to the church that particular day because something that wasn't normal was happening in the upper room. Hallelujah. Pentecost can never become like other denominations. We cannot be like the charismatic movements. We cannot be like other denominations in whom I will not choose or I choose not to mention. But we cannot be like them as children of light. We're supposed to mess up the world as it is. Amen. We are supposed to draw outside the lines. We're supposed to think outside the box. Amen. When people look at us, we they need to see something different than what they're used to. It is by God's design that the church stands out in the crowd. Hallelujah. It's by the design of God for the church to be different. The Bible says that we are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. He says that no man lights a candle and then puts that candle under a bushel. He said if you're ashamed of me I'll be ashamed of you. The reason that the church amen, the reason that people want to look like, walk like and talk like and act like mainstream religion is because we're ashamed for people to look at us and say that that they are one of them. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. Amen. I've had co-workers say to me, and to me it's a badge of honor, you're not a normal preacher. Hallelujah. I have fought my life. You talk to my wife, she'll tell you this. I have fought my whole life not to be normal. I don't want to be a normal husband. I don't want to be a normal daddy. I don't want to be a normal grandpa. I don't want to be a normal Christian. I don't want to be a normal preacher. I don't want to have a normal prayer life. I don't want to have a normal study habit. I want to be different. I have fought my whole life to be different because I don't want to be drawn in to that devil called normal to where I can just go through the paces and go through the actions and go through what everybody expects of me. I want to be what God wants me to be. I want to let my light shine so that others might see my good works so that they might glorify my Father which is in heaven. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Amen. God help us to be different than the world is. But to be different opens us up to ridicule. Not to, 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 not, to not act like or talk like or look like others opens the church of, uh, to being persecuted and scorned and ridiculed and mocked and made fun of and called names and all of this. Uh, amen. It bothers me sometimes uh, when we're no longer known as the holy rollers. Uh, amen. It bothers me sometimes back then uh, when we were called holy rollers. It, it was a form of persecution. It was a form of, of embarrassment that we are called holy rollers and we try to defend ourselves. Amen. But when we were known as holy rollers, we were accused of swinging on the chandeliers and we were accused of doing this and that. Uh, oh God, whatever happened to us uh, that we're not ever accused of being emotional in the house of God anymore. Uh, amen. I want to become so emotional if God chooses to cause me to dance before 
I want to be able to dance before the Lord. If he wants me to run, let me run. Hey man, we only have one chandelier in the house and I wouldn't trust it. But if God called me to swing on chandeliers, God give me the ability to jump high enough to grab a hold of the chandelier so that I might swing for the glory of God. Now God's not going to call you to do that. But I want to have a willing heart that if he chose to call me to do that, I want to do that. Amen. I remember what it was like to be persecuted because we were different. I remember that. And I'm not going to get into it this morning. I touched on it here a while back. But I remember coming to a community where there was no Pentecostals and there was no apostolic presence and there was no tongue talking and there was nobody that danced before the Lord and got emotional in church. There was just normal churches that, that went around doing normal things. I remember going to school and being the only apostolic Holy Ghost filled person in the, in the schoolhouse. And when they knew that I was different and I didn't walk like they did, and I didn't do the things that they did and I didn't dress like they dressed and I, I didn't talk like they talked uh, amen they zeroed in on me as being different uh, and I remember the laughter and I remember the persecution I remember all of the things that were said to me and, and about me uh, amen I remember that but I'm here to tell you today it drew me closer to the God that I served uh, amen it drew me closer to a place uh, in God where I can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Society ridicules those that are different. One of the the reasons that the world rejected Jesus Christ because he didn't fit into their mold that the religious leaders had perfected. He ate with sinners. You ain't supposed to do that, preacher. Hallelujah. He rubbed shoulders with the outcast. (laughs) Man, he, he had compassion on those that the world rejected and the world didn't have compassion on. Amen. He loved the unlovable. Amen. He didn't, he didn't have a problem sitting down with the harlot and talking to them. Amen. He didn't have a problem sitting down with the wine bibbers, as the Bible calls them, and, and teach them the ways of God. Amen. It was not in the, in the forte of, of, of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They separated them themselves from those kind of people but Jesus came for the outcast if he hadn't come for the outcast friend I wouldn't be in the church today because I was an outcast amen without God I was without God without hope in this world hallelujah we live in a world hallelujah that is everything but normal (laughs) hallelujah it's not hard to be abnormal Or it's not hard to be normal in the world that we live in because everything is messed up. Are you listening to me? I'm not going to get a foot on a soapbox, so just relax. Amen. But our world is so messed up that it doesn't know which way is up and which way is down, which way is right and which way is left. Amen. They don't know the difference between a man and a woman. I told you I wasn't going to get on that, but they can't tell the difference. There's only two. Hallelujah. Amen. But it ridicules those that are different. We live in a world that is, is everything but normal. As a matter of fact, it's so messed up. And, and our world is so confused. And, and because they are so messed up and because they're so confused, that's why they're attacking the things that are stable. Amen. The institutions that have been around for generations and generations and centuries. And that's why they're being attacked today is because the world in its confusion confused state sees it as normal and it compares itself with that which is normal and it makes them uncomfortable I'm preaching this morning amen that's why there's perversion in the pulpits perversion in the pulpits didn't come out of nowhere amen it's because they want what is stable and what is right to be abnormal and upright hallelujah Jesus redefined what it meant to be normal Everything that Jesus taught go against how normal people function. He taught that somebody smites you not to recoil, not to reciprocate, but he says when somebody smacks you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. That's not normal. Hallelujah. He said if your brother asks you to go a mile, go with him too. It's not normal 
he said, if you see a brother in need and, and you have two coats, give him one of the coats that you have. That's not normal. Amen. The normal thing is, is to accumulate as much as you can accumulate. Amen. We have clothes in our closets that we haven't wore so long that we probably still can't wear them. But we're going to keep them in the closet because, and there are people that need clothes and there's people that need food. And, and, and again, I don't want to go on a tangent, but understand what I'm saying. The teachings of Jesus was not normal. Amen. He taught to wash your brother's feet. He said blessing to the, bless those that curse you. Amen. Do good to those that despitefully use you. That's not normal. Amen. That's the teachings of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said if you want to gain your life, if you want to live, you've got to be willing to lose your life. Amen. That's not normal. The truth is that Jesus turned normal wisdom upside down. Amen. And normal people People have a hard time understanding, much less living, the principles that Jesus taught. Are you staying with me, church? Matter of fact, when you look at the scripture, Jesus once compared himself to a hen. Of all the animals that Jesus could have compared himself with, certainly an eagle would come to mind. Man, a lion, and we know he's a lion of the tribe of Judah. But he compared himself to a hen, and he compared King Herod to a fox. Now, you know what happens when a fox and a hen tangle. It doesn't bode well for the hen. Anybody ever heard the phrase, there's a fox in the hen house? Hallelujah. And that's not going to have a happy ending for the hens. But think about it, Jesus comparing himself to a brooding hen. And his chief, the hen's chief purpose in life is to protect her young. And all she has to use is just a tiny beak. And, and she doesn't even have talons on her legs in order to fend off the enemies. About all she can do is fluff herself up and sit on her baby chicks and, and guard them and protect them. All she can do is put herself between them and the fox. Amen. Ill-equipped as she is, all she is willing to, oh, listen to why he compared himself to a hen. Amen. A hen says, if you're going to get my baby, Babies, you're going to have to go through me. You're going to have to get, kill me first. Amen. Jesus Christ became a ransom so that you and I can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Jesus fluffed himself out in front of, of Herod and in front of Satan and said, I'm going to be willing to die so that my babies can live, so that my children can have life. The best that a hen can hope for is that she satisfies the appetite of the fox so that he leaves her babies alone. Meanwhile, Herod is like that cruel, cunning, crafty, sly fox. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ had disciples. Herod had soldiers. Jesus served, but Herod ruled. Jesus prayed for his enemies. King Herod had his enemies killed. Are you seeing the difference between the hen and the fox? In the kingdom of God, the way up is down. Amen. If you want to be exalted, he says you've got to humble yourself. Amen. The way to achieve greatness in God is to bow your knee. Amen. And kneel before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In the kingdom of God, the way in is out. The way to be first is to be last. The way to become great is to become the least in the kingdom of God. Anybody hearing the word this morning? The way to be success is to be a servant. The way to win is to surrender to him. The way to be strong is to become weak. The way to be secure is to become vulnerable. Amen. The way to life is through death. I know it sounds totally crazy, but I'm here to tell you today, amen, it still works. Amen. To still live the kingdom of God and the teachings of God, it still works. I read a story. I'm going to share with you that fits in my message. It was between a mom and dad and, and a little boy on their way home from Sunday school. 
On the way home from church, an eight-year-old boy was sharing with his parents what he had learned in Sunday school. He said, boy, it was exciting. He explained, Moses organized all the Hebrews into a resistance group. They planned real carefully and finally broke loose from their Egyptian slave masters. They moved as fast as they could toward Canaan. They drove every kind of SUV they could get their hands on, expeditions, navigators, jeeps, and hummers. But Pharaoh's armies wouldn't give up. They tracked down the Israelites with radar. They exploded missiles all around them and shot from at them from jet planes in the sky. And when Moses and his people reached the Red Sea, they thought they were finished. There was a raging water in front of them, and the Egyptians were behind them. Suddenly, the Corps of Engineers came, and they rescued and built a pontoon bridge over the Red Sea, and all the fugitives crossed over to freedom. Then, just as Pharaoh's forces were about to go across the bridge, the Hebrews blew it up with dynamite and saved all the people, and they all lived ever, happily ever after in the land of promise. The little boy's parents were more than just a little concerned about the child's overactive imagination. Is that really what they told you at church this morning, they inquired. Well, the little boy said, not exactly. But if I told you what really happened, you'd think I was nuts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to describe the God that we serve so big that people will write us off as being nuts. Anybody believe we're serving a big God? Hallelujah. There is nothing. And when we prayed for a prayer request this morning, and, and I know we fit in this mold that we pray the same thing over and over and over again, I just simply said, God, there is not a doubt in my mind that you can't heal every person that is sick that we've requested prayer for. There is nothing impossible for you. There is not a disease that he cannot heal. There's not an addiction that he cannot deliver you from. There's not a problem that he can't solve. He's not one that's going to make a way as I said the other night he is the way the truth and the life amen we're serving a big God that can do big things and he can do anything we don't serve a normal God and if we don't serve a normal God amen we can't be a normal church and we can't be a normal child of God amen we've got to have the Holy Ghost moving inside of us and when the Holy Ghost is moving inside of us there is nothing normal about you When Jesus was born, he turned things upside down. When you think about a God in a manger, that's not normal. You'd think he would have been in a palace. That's why his own rejected him because they were expecting a Messiah to come, but they wouldn't expect him to come the way he came. They were expecting him to come the normal way that Messiahs would come, in a palace or uh, in a place of influence. He meant a virgin being the mother that had never known a man. That's not normal. That's not happen. That cannot happen. How can it be? Amen. Because this world is so normal, they rejected him because he came in an abnormal way. Amen. John said it this way. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came into his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to all them that believe on his name. Hey, friend, you cannot be like Jesus and be like the world at the same time. You cannot love Jesus and love the things of the world at the same time. Amen. You can't dance before the Lord and dance with the world at the same time. Amen. I've come to tell you today and remind you that Jesus is not looking for a fling. He's not looking for a one-night stand. He's looking looking for somebody to say, I am committed, amen, even in the good times and in the bad times. And when I can feel you, oh, I'm preaching to somebody, amen. And when I can't feel you, God, I am committed, amen. I've prayed prayers through my life. God, you're not going to shake me. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to walk with you if I never feel you again, amen. I am not leaving this place. I'm not leaving the house of God. I'm not leaving my relationship 
relationship with the Lord. Uh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Hallelujah. No man can serve two masters. You either hate the one and love the other, or else you'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. The world in its normal frame of mind looks on the outward appearance, but the Bible says that the Lord looks on the heart. Amen. The world's philosophy is seeing is believing. If I can see it, I believe it. But the Bible says unless you believe, you'll not ever see the things of God. The world says don't let them see you sweat it. Amen. But the Bible the Bible says that when I am weak, he is strong. Amen. He who dies with the most toys is the world's philosophy. But the Bible says that we are to lay treasures up in heaven where the thieves cannot break in and steal and where the rust and the moth cannot corrupt it. I want you to understand we are different. Hallelujah. Not better, but we're to be different. Called us out of the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hallelujah. I want to be different. I want to fight against this devil called normal. Hallelujah. I want to be a different preacher. I want to be different child of God. I want to walk different. I want to talk different. I want to act different. I don't want to go the same places. I don't want to do the same things. Amen. Oh, but Brother Hopkins, there's nothing wrong with them. I'm not going to argue at this point whether they're right or wrong, but I want to be different. I don't want to be like other preachers. I don't want to be like other Pentecostal preachers. Amen. Not saying they're right or they're wrong or indifferent. I just want to be different. God has moved upon me to be different than anybody else. The concept of a crucified God was deemed so offensive, so crazy that the world accused the Christians of madness for even suggesting that they hung Almighty God on the cross. Still people today that will, will argue with you saying that it wasn't God on the cross, it was the third man. <clears throat> it was 500 years. Listen, this is history. It was 500 years after the crucifixion before any images depicting Jesus on a cross began to appear because they chose not to accept it. It was not normal. It's not normal. How could Almighty God groan upon the tree and say it is finished and take his last breath and, and, and give up the ghost? And, and how can it be? And, and it was so offensive that by law, or, or not really by law, but by, by just common feeling that they couldn't put themselves to paint pictures or depict Jesus hanging on a cross. He meant Almighty God on a cross. That's not normal. He meant the number one problem that God has with the church today is that it often becomes so numbingly normal when we are supposed to be called out. He meant God is still looking for a peculiar, it might say peculiar people. Hallelujah. He meant when we do something and it goes terribly wrong, hallelujah, Hallelujah, we fail him. And we fail the world when we become normal. Her priest, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26, and I'm trying to hurry. The Bible says, her priest have violated my laws and have profaned my holy things because they have put no difference between holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and, and I, am, I am profaned amongst them. Can I just break that down to you and say that the Bible is saying that the preachers have violated the law because they have blurred the lines of what's right and wrong, what's holy and what's profane, what is unclean and clean. We've just become so 
uh, what's the word I want to use, inclusive, that we want to include everybody. And, and we still, when we do that, and I believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is to whosoever will, let him come and take the waters of life freely. But you got to come the same way. Hallelujah. There is no such thing as illegal immigrants in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Or politically correct, there is no such thing as undocumented immigrants. We are all repented of our sins. We've all been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And we've all received the baptism of the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in a language that you didn't learn in school. Amen. It is the gift of God. Amen. It is a sign to you and to to the unbeliever and to those that are around you uh, that you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't know about you, but I remember everybody that got the Holy Ghost. Uh, they started walking different. They started talking different. They started looking different. I used to, when I was a child growing up in the church, I used to observe people that when God filled them with the Holy Ghost, uh, the next time they would come to church, they would look different in so much. Some of them I didn't even recognize recognize. Amen. Why? Because God filled them with the Holy Ghost and God's Holy Ghost inside of them changed them from being normal to being abnormal and to being children of God. There is a difference between holy and profane. The word profane comes from the Hebrew word Mean, meaning to make ordinary or common, to normalize, to violate the honor of, to treat as common. Amen. The voice spoke to Peter when he was on the rooftop. Amen. And the sheet was let down out of heaven with all manner of unclean beast. And Peter kept saying, it's not meat for me to eat that which is unclean. Amen. But the voice called from heaven and said, don't call the things of God common. Hallelujah. What our generation needs to see is less commonality between the church and the world. Hello. Used to be you could go down the street and you could tell even uh, when you were approaching somebody and they were walking away from you, you could pretty much tell a man from a woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I'm not going to go there. I'm just, I, you're, you're going there for me. But the lines have been blurred to where you have no idea. And when that happens, it's, you see, it doesn't, the devil in his ability to thwart the kingdom of God doesn't attack the head. He's attacked the head before, and the head always wins. But he changes things. The Bible says of the serpent that was in the garden, he was more subtle than any beast of the field. In other words, he was more cunning. He was more sly. He was a little bit more trickier than any other beast in the field. It was not by accident that Satan entered into the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Are you with me? Hallelujah. It was not by accident. It was by design. And what the devil does, he begins to blur lines of our belief and what we hold dear and what the Bible teaches against. And before we know it, amen, that change and the blurring of the lines works itself up the, the, the trunk of the tree and it affects the branches until the tree no longer bears fruit. Uh, and the reason the tree no longer, oh, I'm preaching this morning, the reason that the church or the tree doesn't bear fruit, fruit is because we're normal. Hallelujah. I've got a tree at the back side of the house. I've said this before. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut it down. And I, I thinking about it yesterday, and I thought, Lord, I don't want to cut that tree down, but there's only one branch that's alive. Or it was in the fall. I don't know. But it's not a normal tree. I promise you it's not a normal tree. It's one of a kind. Anybody in here knows what I'm talking about. It is an apple tree. And it blossoms every spring. And there's apples on it every year. And in the fall of the year, in October, guess what happens? It blooms. That's not normal. 
I hate to cut that tree down. I've got the only abnormal tree in the world. I told you I didn't want to be normal. I'm not a normal husband, not a normal dad, I'm not a normal grandpa, I'm not a normal preacher, and I can't even raise normal trees. Hallelujah. <clears throat> any study, when you study any major revival in the last hundred years, there was a common thread in all of those. And that is when they got together, they didn't have church. Do you realize that we can put so much effort in having church that we miss having church? I told you I'm hurrying. You see, when we forget, when William, a man by the name of William Seymour, at a place called Azusa Street that started uh, at the turn of the century, there was a great revival. Man, they weren't having church. They were having a prayer meeting. He wasn't upstanding and exhorting the church. He was on his knees with his head on a crate, seeking the face of God. When we can figure out every service in our natural mind, we automatically figure God completely out of the equation. Hello, I'm going to pastor here just a little bit. <clears throat> You'll notice that every time we have a move of God in our services, it's because we just leave off the schedule and just get lost in the Holy Ghost. We can have normal church if we want to. Man, we've got to unlearn how to have church. Hello. <clears throat> this is in the meat of it now. Hallelujah. Some have got so good at having church that they really don't need his anointing. They know what songs that they can sing to cause a crowd to get in the tizzy. They know what to do. Preachers know how to say it, what to say and when to say it. They know how to hide and kick their heels, amen, in order to get the people all excited and jump up and down, and there's not a drop of anointing in the house. I'm not judging. I'm just telling you facts. Hallelujah. I remember going to a church one time. It was one of our churches, and, and we was there, and, and it was a celebration service, and, and it, it bothered me. I, we left the church that night, and I told my sweet wife, I said, I'll never step foot in that building again. I felt literally nothing. Amen. I was working for Brother White. Amen. Building a garage in Spencer. He was our presbyter, and it bothered me all night long, and I was on the roof, and it was snowing, and we he was working on shingles and, and you could see the snow coming. He lived up on top of a hill. Hey man, you could see the snow sh coming and, and, and we would lay shingles until it started to snow and we get off the roof and until it quit snowing, we get back up on the roof, sweep the snow off and put shingles on until the next snow squalls come. And we did that and all of a sudden I said, Brother, H Brother White, I can't stand it anymore. I got to ask you a question. He was at the same service. I said, Brother White, did you feel anything last night? I said, because I didn't feel nothing. I don't want to go to church and feel nothing. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't want to be in the presence of God and not be able to feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to preach unless I feel the anointing of God in my life. I don't want to sing. I don't want to play music unless I feel God. And that It's all about Him, not about me. It's about the kingdom of God. Brother White said, Brother Hopkins, he said, I didn't feel a thing either. That made me feel so good. I about shouted. If I wouldn't have been on the roof, I would have. His explanation was some services geared toward entertainment. My God, help me. Hallelujah. Help me never get to the place where I want to entertain anything but the presence of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to entertain anything but the presence of God when we come to the house of God. This is not Sir, him servicing me. It's my time to service him. Amen. When we become more concerned with protocol of having church, we resemble the tabernacle of Moses, not the upper room. Amen. The upper room was abnormal. Amen. It was not common. It was not ordinary. It was not, re it was not church as it always was. Amen. When it becomes so steeped in rituals and, and ritualistic ideas and philosophies, we're no better than the tabernacle in the wilderness. Somebody just needs to forget how to have church. 
Because revival is not going to happen under normal circumstances. Revival has never happened under normal circumstances. It cannot be birthed in, in a controlled environment. We just got to get lost in the Holy Ghost. Brother Hopkins, that's not normal. You know, my God, I, I, this is not my notes, this is free. There's some people that don't worship God because they don't want to be abnormal. Nobody else is worshiping God. Nobody else is feeling what I'm feeling. Why should I get out and dance before the Lord? Why should I raise my hands and worship the Lord? So we, 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 we fold into being normal, being ordinary. How long has it been since you felt the presence of God and nobody else was shouting and you thought, Lord, is it just me? Amen. I remember people saying, I, I wanted to dance before the Lord tonight, but I thought I was in the flesh. Hey, let me tell you something. If you can dance before the Lord and you're not in your flesh, you're doing something. You just can't get your flesh motivated to dance before the Lord. Let me go on. Hallelujah. It cannot, revival is not going to be conceived in an incubator. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, not before, but when they do this, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Church, listen to me this morning. We got to guard ourselves by becoming so set in our our ways that we quench the spirit of God. We're fighting a devil today, and that devil's name's normal. And we can, and if he can make us dry, and if he can make us normal, he will shut us down. He will sterilize us, and we will not be able to have children in the Lord. And people will not be able to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Who has heard such a thing? The prophet Isaiah said it. I'm closing. Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? And shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Stand across the building. I'm closing. What does the devil fear more? Or what does the devil fear most about the times we get together? Bringing us down to an end. What the devil fears more than anything is our spontaneity. Hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else. I'm just going to worship. I always like using this illustration of Sister Louise Kirby years ago. She was an elderly lady that was coming to church. <clears throat> we were having revival. And she had got the Holy Ghost on Saturday night of revival. But she wasn't satisfied. It just it just didn't satisfy her. She, matter of fact, she wasn't positive that she had received the Holy Ghost. And I remember she was standing just about where Sister Campbell is standing right now. And, and she got up during testimony service. This is not normal. And I can, I'll, I'll always remember the words that she said, and this is almost verbatim. She said, I don't know whether I got the Holy Ghost last night or not. But she said, if I didn't, I'm going to get it right now. And she threw both hands. She began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Not normal. You don't do that in prayer request. You don't do that in testimony service. That's wait. You got to wait till the preacher shuts up and, and gives an altar call in order to get the Holy. You can get the Holy Ghost anywhere, at any time, in any place. All you got to do is say, "I don't know whether I got it last night or not, but if I didn't, I'm going to get it right now." And God is going to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the devil fears that spontaneity. He is so afraid that you might get close enough. Uh, and you might just cut loose enough to get the victory that you so desperately need in your life. Uh, he knows that if you let loose, then all of heaven is going to break loose. Hallelujah. If there's ever been a time when heaven needs to break loose, it's the day and hour that you and I are living. It's why the devil is so desperately trying to get us to be normal. And I come today against the spirit of that normal. I come against it. I don't want to be a normal church. 
Hallelujah. I want to be a place where the presence of the Holy Ghost can be felt. I want to have a sanctuary where people can come in and that is having a rough time in the world and the world is abusing them and, and misusing them and mistreating them and they can feel the presence of God, the peace that passes all understanding. Uh, amen. I want them to feel that they can enter into a sanctuary. I want saints of God to be able to come in uh, Amen, and feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and if they've had a bad day, or a bad week and they don't feel good that they can begin to feel the presence and the soothing spirit of God. I want sinners to come to the house of God. Amen. Knowing that they're lost and undone without God and yet they can feel that there is hope in the Lord. Hallelujah. I was going to preach. Let me sidetrack here. I was going to preach on the scripture in 1 Corinthians about charity. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, the Bible says that the greatest of these is love. And I got to thinking about, my mind just went blank on the scriptures, uh, charity, faith, and hope. And I thought this, and this is going to sound, this is going to sound horrible, but I've never seen anybody, I, I was going to preach, and I may preach on it, I'll give you the, the heads up. I was going to preach upon the the forgotten triplet. We sing about charity. We sing about faith. But we don't sing much about hope. And I thought to myself, I said, Lord, nobody, I've never heard anybody committing suicide because they didn't have charity. I've never heard of anybody committing suicide because they didn't have faith. But there is people that's taken their life because they didn't have hope. I know the Bible, and I'm not arguing with the Bible, and I believe the greatest is love. But we so desperately need hope. I want people to come into the sanctuary and feel the hope of God. Amen. That there is hope for tomorrow. That Jesus is already in your tomorrow even before you show up. We need to forget about how to just have church and just remember how to have revival. Revival's three steps, and I'm closing this thought. Stir up the gift that's within you. Quench not the spirit, and don't give place to the devil. If you can do those three things, you can have revival. Hallelujah. Stir up the gift that's within you. Quench not the spirit, neither give place to the devil. Heavenly Father, I've preached your word. I've come to all I can say. God, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to let this church be abnormal. I pray in my desire today, Lord, from the top to the bottom, 